I am so glad you're here. It's bright and early. We have an amazing, amazing panel for you today. First up, costume designer. Uh, one of the first, if not the first, costume designer to be acknowledged as a Disney legend. Um, please welcome to the stage, Colleen Atwood. Yay! Again, so much to say about this uh, talent, gifted person who served the Walt Disney Company in so many different ways. Please welcome soon-to-be Disney legend, Martha Blandings. Um, this next gentleman I have known for a long, long time, happily so, an animator um, who animates Mickey Mouse. So in a way, he is Mickey Mouse. Please welcome Mark Henn. Congratulations. An extraordinary Imagineer, explorer, creator of worlds, Joe Rohde, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Good, big day today. I know. I actually <laughs> agonize over what to wear today because Colleen is here. <laughs> you did well. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, I didn't agonize that much. I want to start out with storytelling because I think the thing that unites us all um, and what makes Disney special, whether it's the parks or, or any kind of entertainment, is the storytelling. Um, and it's what Walt Disney stressed himself and what you folks all stress in your work. When we say this word story, we, we're talking about something that means something. There's something underneath. Right. We pay attention to the story because as it unveils itself, as we keep unwrapping it, it's like it, it gets richer and more meaningful. And we realize we're not just taking our time listening to a thing that happened. Yeah, yeah. We're listening to something that has meaning that we can use, that we can live, that we can feel. And that's what makes it a story. If somebody's a prince, for instance, it's kind of nice if they can be a prince that you believe is also a person that isn't just there in a, some stiff, fancy outfit to be a prince. Mm. The same with the princess. I think that if you can connect the humanity of a character within the story, no matter what their level of, of existence is in the world, rich, poor, famous, invisible, by, by doing that, then you've done your job telling the story. Mark, um, it's an amazing honor, um, and now and now I'm passing it on to a new generation of animators. But to you know now take the time to, you know, be recognized for basically yeah just a job well done. That means a lot. It yeah. really does, and rightly so. Yeah, it's hard to yeah hard to put it in words any more than that. Thank you. Many of our guests know a lot about. Disney and Walt Disney, Disneyland, our Imagineers, you, and they have questions. And it was more of me validating their questions uh, but, and yeah, answering yeah. their questions for right. them. And then I took it from being a tour guide and then when I went into special events and creating an event, I'm lucky because I was able to have people like you and Joe Rohde to be a part of the event and tell your story, that's what they wanted to hear. Yeah. They wanted to hear that and more. Yeah, isn't that funny? I mean, I, you really notice that because there's such a hunger for that that I don't see in, 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 you know, there's certainly other theme parks and other places out there in the world, but there's something about Disney that has that at the core of it all. What's that like when you sit down with a blank piece of paper and go, oh man, I'm entrusted with this character that has to fill a place in this script? Um, is that um, nerve-wracking? At times, at yeah, times. Yeah, And well, particularly when I animated three of the princesses kind of back to back to back. And that was, when I got to number three, I was like, oh boy, because I, I don't want to just repeat what I did on number one and number two. You were really good at it though. Uh, Joe, um, I think a question we're all thinking is, what's the deal with that earring? Well, the earring's been there. The earring is a celebrity, and I am the friend of the celebrity. I travel with the earring, and people see the earring, and they're like, oh, that's that famous uh, guy. Who's this person with him? Um, I, I started in 1987, and my boss in the model shop had said, you know, you kind of don't look like a Disney employee anyway, because I had long hair. Yeah, yeah. 
so maybe you shouldn't wear any Disney ID when you're in Japan. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, that's not fair. I've been working for this company for seven years. Yeah. So I took my Disney five-year pin, which is a lapel pin. It's beautiful. And I stuck it through that little tiny hole in my ear, <laughs> which made the hole bigger. Yes. And started a cascade of other decisions. Yes. Uh, um, basically, whenever I go someplace I've never been before, a country, yeah. I look for a hoop-shaped earring, usually ethnic or tribal or something, but yeah. nowadays anything, uh, and it goes in my ear. Now, of course, I, I have a bowl full of them at home. This is the uh, travel pack. 